Back on the Sportsmax Zone, it's a Thursday at the track day and uh, horse racing dominating the show today because Rajiv Mirage, the Jamaica-born outstanding uh, jockey who has ridden almost 2,000 winners in North America, including four Breeders' Cup races, is live in the studio with us. Um, he plans, Rajiv, as he's been talking to us, to get back into the saddle as soon as possible. Your weight at the moment is a little over 130 pounds. How confident are you that within the next month or two you can get down to your regular riding weight of 115, 117? Well, it's all about like discipline um, and really just focus on, on getting the weight down. So the two major things, because I haven't been riding for 10 months, right? And I had riding off the table to the side. So when this thing come up about this opportunity, I had to analyze and say, okay, how much time do I have and how much time can I put in? And I see that it's feasible for me to get it down. So for me to get down to 117, I would need to lose 13 pounds yes. right from here. Is that what? Yeah, so yeah just about. Yeah. yeah, so 13 pounds. So for me, that is not even a big hard thing to do because if I lose two pounds a day for like seven days, yeah, that's it. I can lose, and, yes. and that's very like yeah. within the wheelhouse. Yeah. That's actually not hard at all as long as you have, have the time to dedicate towards it. Um, and also, there's the fitness factor, right? I want to make sure on a day like that, um, it's the biggest race in Jamaica. I mean, I wouldn't want to not be at the prime condition. So I'm actually planning to not only drop my weight and have it ready long before December the 3rd, because I'm going to go back to Florida and ride some races mm -hmm. at Gulfstream Park mm -hmm. to get myself yeah. on point. Yeah, you spoke about your desire to ride in Jamaica for the first time. I remember back in 2013, you went to Trinidad and Tobago to ride John O'Brien's Princess Zishan in the Derby, which was won, by the way, by Javier Castellano, um, the outstanding Venezuela-born rider aboard Big Man in Town, a Jamaica-born born horse. What was that Santa Rosa Park experience like in Trinidad and Tobago? Yes, yeah, so, uh, that, that, well, that was the first time I was ever riding in the Caribbean, right? And um, it was a great experience. I mean, uh, first time to Trinidad for me, and uh, they treat me really well there. Um, Your uncle had ridden in the race as well, Alan my, my uncle, and he's already actually um, won the Trinidad Derby prior to that, so yes, he, he was did. familiar with the truck and everything and familiar with the people. I really had a, a great time. It was a great experience, a great exposure for me. Um, one of the reasons why I, how I ended up riding in Trinidad and why I've never ridden in Jamaica is because... Um, in the past, every time I got approached by someone to ride in Jamaica or whenever it seemed like, you know, there's a, a big race or something here, um, it always conflicted with my schedule overseas. So, like, the, the Derby Day in Jamaica would be like the Belmont State Day in the United States. Yeah. And so it, it really wouldn't have made sense. That day in Trinidad was actually a Monday, yeah. which was their holiday. And... Um, <laughs> there was no racing yeah. overseas. I uh, recognize that it was, when it happened, yes. Yeah, and then I was approached, hey, can you um, come now? We have a horse to ride here. Um, and, you know, they, they gave me the details. And I was like, yeah, sure, because, you know, it makes sense. So it's not that I really didn't want to or try to come to Jamaica to ride before. It's just, like, never really work out. Yeah. The, the, the multiple sovereign award winner um, uh, in Canada, well, the, Ken the, the man who rides in Canada winning, winning multiple sovereign awards, Patrick Bowman, husbands, has never ridden, ridden a winner at Caymanas Park. He was a uh, shorted second in a Guinness one day. And you know how Jamaican fans are, Rajiv. If you never win the race, they say, okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Bowman has that against him, he has never won. So you have the chance when you come down to, to, get, to do something. I, I want to go back to when Angel Cordero took you into the Naira circuit and you were with the big boys now. Uh, you had uh, an agent who needed no introduction, one of the greatest jockeys of all time, and a good agent too. And the sort of moves that he made to get you into the big stables where you could be riding the best horses so you could ride the best horses in the best races. Well, I'll tell you a pivotal time in my career was that time because a lot of people wouldn't know this, but when he took me to New York and, and training me his techniques and everything, that was great. I learned, I mean, you can't buy that experience, you know, for somebody to go with that kind of knowledge and to, be, to bring me under his wing. However, I was actually struggling on the track. I rode a hundred races in Belmont and only won one. Mm -hmm. And I forgot to mention this part of a contingency was that in the first year, 
if I wasn't having success as a jockey and it wasn't working out for me like I always visioned, I was actually going to quit riding mm -hmm. and go back to school. Mm -hmm. That was a part of the contingency, go back to college. And um, in that struggle, I got caught with another crossroads. It's either um, Angel was like, look, this is a strategy. Um, we're, it's, we're going to Saratoga now from Belmont. You're not even going to get any rides in Saratoga. You can stop riding and we can save the apprenticeship and in the winter you will have a better opportunities, mm -hmm. right? However, that would have elapsed my time and that I said I would go back to school. Right. That I planned with my mom. So right. I got caught in that. I said, well, that doesn't work for me. It's either I continue to ride mm -hmm. where I can, if I can do good, or I'll have to quit riding. And um, so he's like, okay, here's what. There's a, um, I have a friend in New Jersey at Mammoth Park. Uh, he's an agent. He's a very good agent. He'll get you going there. It's a level down from New York, mm -hmm. but you know, it's a good place to kind of build up. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Mammoth Park, what's that? Mm -hmm. well, there's horse racing in New yeah, Jersey. Yeah. He said, yeah, just go over the bridge like an hour, <laughs> an hour. And um, I'm like, okay, I guess that it's either that or go back to Florida and mm -hmm. go back to school. So I packed up my car. <laughs> when he, the, he called the guy up, they put me on a horse the, the next day. I don't know where I'm going. Mm -hmm. So I talked to my parents. I'm like, this is the situation. They said, okay, um, I got an agent in New Jersey, Mammoth Park. Don't know where it is mm -hmm. or anything. Mm -hmm. So I, she, my mom said, look, we have a friend. He, he's having a mm -hmm. party here mm -hmm. in Mammoth Park, it, close to Mammoth Park, like mm -hmm. 10 minutes away. Drive there. Mm -hmm. You're riding tomorrow. Stay at a hotel tonight. And then figure it out. He's going to hook you up with some people. See if you can get a room or something. Mm -hmm. So I get to the party and I run into another jockey that my father used to ride with, Mikey Redwood. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Mikey Redwood very well. So I never, met, well. yeah. 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 So I never met him and he's like, oh, I used to ride with your dad and everything. And I'm like, oh, yeah, good. I'm, and I'm telling my situation mm -hmm. and he goes, okay, here's the thing. I have a room uh, with, where I'm renting a room. I could talk to the guy to get your room. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah, that's mm -hmm. better than sleeping <laughs> in probably the car or something yeah. tonight, you know. So, so we get, he put hooked me up in the room. The first horse I ride there, yeah. I won or finished second, and the trainer really liked it. it was one of the top trainers, and all of a sudden, phew, everything changed. The fourth week I was there, I won like seventeen races. Yeah. I went from winning to struggling. We're going five months winning one race, yes. and now I ta I'm taking off, and it it just started this. This whole, that's where my career really, the, the most, that's the most pivotal time Home because it went from going, it's, it was either that or it stopped yeah. and I wouldn't be in the position. Yeah. I, you, I, 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 I love, I, I love US racing to an extent. I've always told Lance that my problem is, is with the whipping, you know, but I love British racing and there are restrictions, there are severe restrictions, but the, the, the US racing fascinates me and I can say this, that Rajiv's victory in 2011 in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, the Caleb's Posse, when the commentator said, Caleb's Posse looks as if he's joined the race at the quarter pole. Yeah. I have it on tape. I have it, I've had it since 2011. I recorded it, and I've, every job I've been to, I've taken it with me. I just play it sometimes yeah. because I've long wanted a Caribbean jockey to win a Breeders' Cup, to see somebody like yes. one of us, yes. and then to see a Jamaican, Rajiv Maraj. I really felt good. So I want to thump yeah, my face, Rajiv, because you've given me pride with Caleb's Posse. Then you did, you did it again. You did it with Group It All. You've done it four times at the Breeders' Cup. Irish war cry we cheered for. So the thing is this. The key to maintaining the relationships with the top trainers to ensure that the, 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 the big prep races in the three-year-old classic season, you'll get good horses for those. And if you sit on a good horse as a juvenile, the trainer will be confident in you to keep you on that good horse throughout the classic prep con um, campaign. Because remember what happened to Charlie Hussey yes. and Spenderbuck and what happened when the horse was really ready to do great things. He was replaced by someone else. What's the key to keeping those relationships strong? And I, I think not only in horse racing, I think the key to being successful mm -hmm. is consistency. Mm -hmm. So everybody has different methods, you know, you, but we do a lot of things the same way. And I feel like, um, you know, just being consistent in working, showing up, dedication. Um, I think that is where you, you, you maintain, you know, your relationships and also you maintain that level of trust with people. They know you become dependable. Yes. And once people can depend on you and they know what you can get, you don't 
necessarily have to think that you have to be the greatest mm -hmm. or you have to try I, I never really try to be better than anybody yes what I try to do is do things to the best of my ability every single time so if you know one of the things that I think that propelled my career was um, when people say the consistent effort every time whether you win you finish second you, you lose you had a bad day you come out the next day you work hard and you smile and you just kind of just duplicate that and you bring that energy that people like to associate themselves with and I think that just make make people just want to you know do do business with you last one for me Lance they, they, they I've heard several jockeys the outstanding ones say talk about their fears when riding and, and this is not injury related of course this is just about the horse and I've heard George Osang say it and I've heard the Tory himself say it as well that sometimes in a race the horse is traveling so easy that they start fretting, wondering, wait, is this horse going to one pace when I really ask him to go? Or is he reserving so much power that when I ask him, he'll, he'll give it to me? They're not quite sure. So the Tory, the Tory always says he, he starts fretting when the horse is, is too easy with him. And Georgia Sang said it. And famously, there was a, a Caribbean Sprint Championship where Georgia was with uh, Milligram. And uh, he was traveling also oh easy up to the top of the stretch. And he said... This, this, I'm, I'm not liking didn't, this. Didn't feel right. When he asked him to go, one paced, uh, ear to the throne, beat him, Errol, um, Errol War, hot War's horse. So, when you're riding, uh, what do you like to feel? Do you like to want to have to scrub a little to get it going? Do you have those anxieties to when the horse is too easy in your hands? Is there anything for you? I, I'm not gonna lie, I would rather the horse just take me as much as he can yeah. because, you know, um, sometimes being a good passenger on the horse and letting the horse. Um, be be themselves mm -hmm. and just being supportive of them without overdoing it is is sometimes the most efficient way to get a horse to perform the best. Um, m my job is always easier when the horse is doing the running, so I would never be um, dissatisfied mm -hmm. or not want a horse to take me easy. However, I think if you the more you ride a horse, you can understand your traits because some horses. If you're riding for the first time, they can mislead you. Mm. For example, a horse, if you're riding for the first time and it might be traveling easy, and then when you squeeze on him, it doesn't progress, you know. Um, and then there's the other horses that you might be like, oh my, you're not going anywhere, and you might all out pedal to the metal, and all of a sudden they just phew, take off, right? Like a Caleb's posse, yes. like in the back scrubbing, so desperate, oh, I'm gonna, never gonna win this race, and then all of a sudden it just blow past the field. <laughs> After, a ride in Killer's Posse after the first time, yeah, the first time, like, oh, damn, this isn't going to happen. But after that, you get knowing that that's his style. So he, he's going to give it to me, so I don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that I just have to do what I do. The same thing where if a horse is, that has that um, thing where they take it easy and then they just throw the anchor on you, yes. they, they only can't really fool you the first time. Yes. <laughs> but after that, you're like, okay, this, this I know this story. Yeah. I know the story. Let me just prepare for it and yeah. just be like, I'm not going to depend on him to really give me more. Mm -hmm. Now that you're talking about race riding, um, can you talk to us briefly, Rajiv, about, if any, a different approach to riding in a, in a turf race as opposed to a dirt race or the tapita tracks, which they now have a lot of in North America. Is there anything that you do different technically in a turf race as against a race on dirt or tapita? Yeah, so um, definitely on the turf and the dirt is, is two different styles, um, especially at a longer, uh, the distance has a big factor as well. But um, on turf, if you, you cannot, you have to be way more meticulous in riding the turf because everything that you give up, you lose. For example, if you go wide, you, you lose ground, it, it, it's actually, a lot more, um, it, it plays out a lot more in the end that you actually lost something. On the dirt, it feels like if your horse is traveling good and you can go three, four wide and, mm -hmm. and run wide and blow them away. Mm -hmm. In the turf, if you lose ground and somebody else capitalize on saving ground, it can actually make a difference between winning and losing. So for that reason, I actually feel like the turf is more of a jockey's race Mm. When, as opposed to the Absolutely. dirt. Yeah. I can say if you're on, you don't have to have the best horse on the turf, but if you give him that perfect trip 
and, the, uh, and another person has the opposite, have like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a bad trip, yeah. you can actually turn the tables where on the dirt, if the horse is significantly better, he's just going to win regardless. Yeah. So it's just. I, I guess that supports George's point about English racing because he loves the English riders and they just go turf in England pretty much, not so much the mixture of dirt mm -hmm. and turf as yeah. they do in, in North America. We spoke about the Mirage family and how extensive it has, um, you know, propelled itself on the North American circuit. There is a younger rider now, Romero Ramsey Mirage, 20, 21 years old, I think. Exactly what relation is he to you? So he's my mom's sister, son, my cousin, right? So, uh, when I was telling you about me moving overseas, um, before my parents came, I was actually living with my aunt when Romero was, she was pregnant with Romero. Yes. Because my parents were living in, in Jamaica and they sent me over. So he was born, uh, you know, I watched him from birth. Yes. Right. I live with, his father was, is actually a jockey in Jamaica as well, Robert Ramsey. Yes, I remember his him. Uncle, his yes. uncle is a steward. That's Paul's um, Paul, brother, right? Yeah, Paul. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Paul is his uncle. Yeah. So that's how he has the Ramsey and then yeah. the Mirage is um, my mom. So he's bred to be a jockey. Yes. And he's doing pretty well. I yeah. see already, though, he has gotten an injury that kept him out for almost a year. Yeah, he almost had, um, I mean, he had a severe injury. He had spinal surgery. Yes. He had um, broken vertebrae from a spill um, as a, actually at a young age. From which which you have experienced as well as a, as a rider. Can you talk quickly, uh, Rajiv, about coming back to race riding after a, a scary fall? Because it is generally felt in racing, in the racing industry, that a lot of jockeys who have bad spills never come back as brave as they were before. Having gone through that, would you say that that has happened to you? Me personally, I feel like um, I, w when I get into riding, I already know the risk of riding. So I already accept that. So I don't have a fear of the injuries or what I'm going to get because but I'm just I'm just asking you though when you had a bad fall which you have had yeah and you get back to race riding and there's a narrow hole that you you want to do you hesitate because you remember what happened before no because you go back with the same mindset it's like getting injured is a part of the it's not it's not if you're gonna get injured it's a when, when? Yeah. so mm. I already accepted that so every time I get injured because I've been injured I've been through the mill I've snapped my arm into I have two plates and 13 screws in this arm as 13 in your right arm. screws, yeah, in this right arm. Wow. I have um, shattered my spine once really bad where I was in a body brace for a year. Yes. Uh, prior to that, I already shattered my spine. Uh, not shattered my spine, I fractured a few vertebrae um, about four years before that. I fractured my pelvis in a six-horse spill. I mean, I've been through the mill. So I had to come back in those situations like you talk every time. And when I do come back, I go back from square one. If I'm going to ride there's no fear of injury. Mm -hmm. Because if you go into it thinking with fear of injury, you could actually cause yourself in to get injured. Because yes. if you make irrational moves because of fear, yes. you could actually put yourself in, in a position to get yeah. injured. Yeah. So um, you, it's a mental thing. You, you got to already have that acceptance and know that when you go out there to ride, you have to be fully into riding and, and having no fear. Yeah. So. To answer your question, for me, it doesn't, I, when I, whenever I get injured and come back, I just ride like I've, the way I need to ride the race. Yeah, but you, you accept though that for some jockeys it may not be that way? Um, I think for every jockey, yeah. when you're 18 years old and you're 20 years old and then you're 30 years old and you're 40 years mm -hmm. old, it's not about a fear <clears throat> of riding, it's about risk to reward. Yes. Yeah. Right. So if, if there is a situation where I had to go through a narrow hole to win a race, right, when when I'm 30 years old or 35 years old or 40 years old, I'm going to think different. When I'm 18 years old, I'm just go. close my eyes and you run go. and crash and fall <laughs> or bounce you off go. the rail. Yeah. Because for one thing, you don't have you don't have that experience with what happens when you fall or what can happen to the horse or how it can even be counterproductive to take that risk. Yes. Because that going through a, 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 in a position that you're not supposed to be in, 
could be construed as going into a tight hole. Yeah. So I think when you get experience, you you cut out going into some of those spots, not because you're fearful, yeah. but because you're more Measured. understanding yeah. of the risk to risk reward, reward calculation. in a split of a second. You, you, I, know, I know you're good in every situation, Rajiv, in the race, but just, just tell us, uh, which, 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 which do you prefer? Do you prefer to be on a leader dictating the pace in whatever race distance? Do you prefer to be stalking uh, third, fourth? Or do you prefer to come way off the pace? I say that because there are some jockeys who, they just live to Jamie Spencer. I mean, he's useless as a leader, but yeah. he comes from behind and he'll nail you. Percy Williams yes. lived for riding the front runner. Carl Brown loved to ride the front oh, runners. We're yeah. talking about some Jamaican jockeys. Yeah. What, what's your preference? I will say the most effective trip that I think in horse racing when to, to make a difference between winning and losing, there's two key factors. The, the one key thing that any jockey can do is save ground. That's the biggest um, difference a jockey can make, right? So I like to be on the rail. And I, I don't care if I'm first, second, third, or last, but I think the perfect trip is having, and it goes by the horse's running style, and, mm, and yeah. there's more dynamics mm, to it, yeah. but having a couple horses dueling in front of you yeah. and just sitting in what we call the catbird seat, yes. yeah. where you have a couple horses dueling and you're in the bridle and, and those horses, because the, the herd animals, if you have those horses dictating the pace for you, they're you know, pressuring themselves more and you're on the bridle. Yes. So I would say my perfect position is just tracking some horses that are dueling and my horse on yeah. the bridle. On the rail. On the rail. Yeah. And then <laughs> and, and the race unfolds. So if somebody's trying to make a move, they're going to have to go around. So sometimes they make a move, go around, like they're going to win early, and then you get out and you beat them because mm -hmm. their horse is it's going to be telling on them mm -hmm. in the end. So if I had to have a preference of a riding style, I would mm -hmm. say that would be it. But that's based on the giving you a better chance of winning, mm -hmm. not because mm -hmm. I, it's more favorable to me. Because yeah. if yeah. I'm on a horse that I think in this specific race, he's going to be at an advantage going to the lead. Yes. I'm going to try to put him on the lead. Yes, yeah. And it doesn't mean that I prefer to ride on the lead. Yeah. Because, like, you see, you know, I've, I've won grade one biggest races coming from 20 lengths last mm -hmm. or just sending a horse to the lead mm -hmm. or just tracking the pace. Yeah. It, you know, so I don't really think that I have a favorable position yeah. to be in other than tracking two dueling horses. That's a, <laughs> that's a dream trip, yeah. I would say. All right, Rajiv, races. we're out of time, but I just want to ask you one more question. Could you name two or three riders in the USA on the North American circuit that you have very high regard for? And whenever you're in a race against them, you know that you've got to be on your on point. I, I would say the greatest jockeys of all time. And John Velasquez is always, I've always idolized him as like, he is the ultimate jockey. Yes. On the track, off the track, to beat him in a race, He's not giving up anything easily, right? He doesn't make mistakes consistently. You know, he does not make a lot of mistakes. John so Velasquez. He's the toughest. Jerry Bailey was another guy that I ride with. He was also a mentor to me. And he, again, you know, two of the all-time yes. greats that I've ridden with. And I'd say for up-and-coming jockeys, I think in, in this, the, this era, yeah. I would say Luis Saez is like mm, the... Saez premium jockey. I think he, he could be, you know, yes. that kind of jockey. I, I, I understand you well. No love for my US jockey, Money Mike Smith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, dude. Success is success, man. Success is success. Yeah. Yeah. I Rajiv, would trade mine with Mike's. Big Money yeah, Mike, yeah? Money Mike's. <laughs> Rajiv, I can't say how much we have enjoyed this it's discussion true. with you here yes. on the Sports Mac Zone. Great to have you in Jamaica. Looking forward to seeing you right here in Jamaica for the first time. All the best with your shedding some weight to get back to race riding and um is that why you guys didn't offer me a burger when i came in that's exactly why we didn't offer you a burger we're looking out for you he, he, he wants to ride blue vinyl just yes in sir the, in the mute yes sir water, yes. that's rajiv mirage um we'll be back with more on the sports sports zone after this <laughs>